everyone, welcome back to My Pristine Marine. And today we are talking about LED lighting. I'm going to start a series of videos uh, to discuss the different components that I chose for the Ocean Motion Reef. But I'm starting with the LED fixture because of all the components, this was the most difficult to choose from. So right off the bat, I'm going to mention that there were two videos on YouTube, both from the channel by Bulk Reef Supply, BRS TV that really helped me distinguish between the different units and organize them um, in a hierarchy. These videos you can find, uh, the first one is titled How To, Selecting the Right LED Aquarium Light, and the second video is LED Lighting for Aquariums. It's episode three. Now in these videos what you'll find is they discuss in detail what light emitting diode technology is and how far it's come since its infancy that although it's not in the adult years, it's definitely come a long way. And in comparison to metal halides and T5 lighting, there are major advantages of LED lights. And so they go through those. And then in that first video I mentioned, how to selecting the right LED aquarium light, they go through and suggest that you make a ranking. You go through all the different categories that you're looking for, and then you rank them according to those categories. For example, they list seven. Um, these are longevity and build quality, internal and external appeal, software and program capability, cost per LED and colors included, the upgrade path, and finally warranty support and availability of different components. And then what they suggest is depending on the number of categories you have, ranking them according to those categories. For example, they had seven different categories listed in order of importance, longevity and build quality being the first, and then that would be ranked zero to seven. The next one, internal aesthetic appeal, is ranked zero to six, and so on and so forth, until your last category, in this case seven, would be ranked zero to one. For myself, I had five different categories. Number one was controllability. I really wanted the capability of doing a ramp up, ramp down, or uh, dusk till dawn effect for this unit. I really like the natural approach, and so that was the most important for me. Along with that controllability went certain aspects of you know, how the controller is programmed, whether it's uh, um, in the unit itself, or with a remote control, or in conjunction with an aquarium controller, or, um, all those features. The second category I had was price per LED and the color spectrum, meaning what LEDs um, are included. The third was the package, meaning what comes in the package. Do you get a hanging kit? Uh, does it come with a controller? Um, all those features are important when I was considering the package. The fourth most important was customer support, how easy it would be to speak with a live person um, to troubleshoot or whatnot or you know, get a replacement part. And fifth was aesthetics. Um, that was important to me. So for the first category, for controllability, I obviously, since there's five categories, ranked the units zero to five, and then the second, zero to four, and so on and so forth. So after doing some looking on the internet and some research, I focused on about seven different units and then went more in depth as far as rating them and um, doing some uh, research on reviews. The ones that I really looked at were the Aqua Illumination Hydra and Soul modular units. I looked at the Ecotech Marine Radions, uh, specifically the Gen 2s. I looked at uh, single light units, for instance the Kessel light. I looked at the um, A350 wide lens. And then a new entry into the LED light um, market was by Current USA, their Orbit Marine light. So after ranking all of them, um, none of these came as close as the two that I finally chose from. And that's mainly because of the programmability was vastly different in all of them, uh, depending on if you link it with a, um, an aquarium controller or you know, what you can do with it as far as you know, ramp up, ramp down. You know, there was a lot of limitations in some of them, uh, mainly with the lower end models like the current um, USA Orbit Marine. Uh, that's kind of a, a, like I said, a, a new fixture on the market and 
Um, for the price point, I think it was um, very competitive. But you know, when I started looking at the LEDs and you know the wattage is only 23 watts, uh, I did not really have enough par for um, some of the coral I want to keep. So um, that one was out. The Kessel, I, I I saw it in person and I thought it definitely looked like a disco ball. Um, you know, with the shimmer lines, obviously that depends on the amount of surface agitation you have, but um, it was a little bit too much for me. Um, and then those modular units, like I mentioned before, everything is extra. You know, it did not come with controllers. They did not come with hanging kits or, you know, mounting units. So uh, those were quite substantially priced extras or add-ons. So I narrowed it down to two units. The second of the units that I narrowed it down to, which is ultimately the runner-up, was this Max Spec Razor R420, or it's also called the 420R. I liked a lot of things about this fixture, but right off the bat you can see how uh, slick it is and how low prof profile the entire unit is. But as far as the hardware goes, um, it's pretty impressive. It's a total of 120 watts with 39 LEDs, each 3 watt, and they are high quality LEDs. They're Cree XTEs um, LEDs, so the binning is very good on these LEDs. The two channels, as you can see there, um, the power is pretty high. It has a total in the first channel of uh, six warm white LEDs at 3,000 Kelvins and eight cool white at 8,000 Kelvins. Channel B are basically the blues. Uh, there's six royal blues between 450 and 465 nanometers. There is six actinic blues between 410 and 420 nanometers, and nine just regular blues between 465 and 485 nanometers. So the color spectrum is pretty good, uh, although I don't see any greens or reds or violets, so um, that was kind of a strike against this unit. Um, it is about a 20 and a half inch um, in length fixture, so it fits nicely over a 24 by 24 cube. And so, as far as the uh, capacity of PAR and um, the quality of the LEDs, I thought this uh, was a really good unit. The one thing that I would say made this unit stand out the most is its passive cooling capacity. It's basically designed to be a 100% heat sink because it's all aluminum. So, um, looking at, as you can see here, the uh, aerodynamic design, cool air is channeled through the bottom of the fixture and heat is dissipated through the entire chassis. Of course it has the fans that turn on when the temperature rises because as we know heat is the number one enemy of LEDs. And another good feature about this unit is that it comes complete with a hanging kit. It's super low profile so its aesthetic value is high. Uh, but ultimately I did not choose this unit um, probably because of the programming capacity. Uh, it's somewhat limited in the channels and what you can do as far as the ramp up and ramp down feature. Although you can uh, have that feature set, it just didn't have as many options as the feature I, as the fixture I eventually chose. So overall, this was the runner-up, and I'm sure if you have this unit, you're happy with it. Uh, the reviews are really good, and its price point is pretty competitive um, as far as the price per LED. It retails for about $420, so it's easy to remember. You know, it's the Max Spec Razor 420, so it's kind of interesting or uh, coincidental that that is the price of the unit. Um, but that's not what I went with. The unit that I eventually chose was the Evergrow IT2060. And I was uh, initially apprehensive because not a lot of websites carried this fixture, but when I started doing some research, I started learning that there was a lot of reviews out there. And well, let's just start with uh, its comparison with the max spec. First of all, it's uh, the same wattage. It's 120 watts. It has about 11 more LEDs. There's 51 LEDs, and again, they're 3 watts apiece. Um, it's not publicized whether they're Cree LEDs, so um, the max spec is better in that respect. But as far as the color spectrum, it's amazing because the diversity and the um, the par rating is a lot greater than the max spec. Not that par is equal to horsepower, as you know, bulk review supply says. Um, more is not always better. Uh, it's just nice to have the option of turning certain channels higher than others. So, 
Uh, what kind of LEDs do they have? This unit has six warm whites at 35,000 Kelvins, four neutral whites at 6,500 Kelvins, and eight cool whites at 12,000 Kelvins. In addition, on this first channel, there are two 420 nanometer violet LEDs and two 520 nanometer greens. And finally, there are two 660 nanometer hyper reds. So right there, you can just see the diversity of the LEDs far exceeds the max spec razors. And that's not even with the blues. There are um, eight 450 nanometer royal blues and 16 460 nanometer actinic blues. And finally, there's three 460 nanometer moonlights. So the color spectrum is amazing on this unit. As far as the size and the uh, dimensions of this unit, um, it is almost 24 inches uh, long. It's 23.6 uh, inches long. So, you know, it covers the entire tank. So the spread is pretty good uh, on this unit. It does come with the hanging kit. So that's a plus as well. And it has the controller on the unit, as does the max spec. But in addition, it comes with a remote control, which is just as easy to control as using the unit, um, the controller that's attached to the uh, fixture itself. Uh, there's two fans that turn on again when the temperature uh, exceeds a certain limit. So uh, you can see in this picture here, you have you know, the hanging kit, you have the controller, and there's the unit itself. I purchased this unit from an online company called um, Barrier Reef Aquariums out of Washington and they were telling me how this unit is so hard to keep in stock because the second they get it in um, it's these are sold and their customer service was phenomenal um, they kind of understood you know my hemming and hawing about which fixture to get and whatnot and um, the one thing that I would say sold me on this unit after doing all the research and reading reviews and things was that they said that they knew somebody um, who they're affiliated with somehow that is a marine biologist and he worked on a spreadsheet to program these two channels to have a ramp up and ramp down feature um, so you know throughout the entire uh, day you have incremental um, increases and decreases in the different channels and they sent me an email with you know all this data and you'll see that later in the video and so you know that just kind of sold me because it shows that there was somebody who works in the you know field of marine biology who who knows and appreciates uh, you know the the reef and you know the natural lighting of uh, a dusk till dawn effect and spent the time to program these channels to show percentages that you know if you want the whites um, you know at 90 percent in the atinix at 100 percent or or whatever percentage you want there's a general nice curve that you can do um, in the steps as they call it or in half hour increments so that was really huge and you'll see that later in the video so now let's go to the tank and see what the unit looks like and how easy it is to program and what it looks like when um, you are ultimately programming the dusk till dawn effect all right, so here you have the uh, fixture, and you have a preset there that says cloudy, but there's presets that are sunny, cloudy, you have a moon, and then custom, which is what you ultimately program. Beyond that, you have a manual setting, and then the settings, which you change your typical things like your language, the date and time. You can reset the entire unit or find out information about the software or firmware that's being used. So going back, you can see that if I choose, say, cloudy, um, you have the two channels. The first channel is the blue, and I have them at 8, and then the white's at 79. But you can change it to whatever you want to, these precepts. So for instance, the moon I like to have at 9. And going into custom, and this is what you program. You go into the uh, settings, you choose custom, and then the steps are either half hour or one hour increments, so 0.5 is a half hour or one hour. And then you just scroll down to the hour, which here at 6 o'clock. 
and then you scroll down again and you choose you know, what you want. So here it's showing that as I'm going up in time, um, each of the channels are different. You know, For instance, 8 o'clock, channel 1 is at 3, and channel 2 is at 1. So I'm just going to take a step back here and scroll through the time. You know, I could do this you know, automatically, but to make it a little bit faster, I'll just step back. So I'm just going through 8 o'clock, 8.30, 9. And you see how it's gradually getting brighter based on the programs that I have for the channels. And there's obviously a lot of surface agitation, so you see the shimmer lines. And there's without the blues, and that's everything completely off. Sorry for the glare, by the way. It's really difficult to show these units. So here's the controller, and it's what I've been changing everything with. As you can see, it has all the presets as buttons. We got sunny and cloudy, moon, custom, and obviously very thin. So it's kind of a nice thing. Um, but of course, you can change everything, you know, on the unit itself. It's kind of a neat touch screen too. So um, you don't have to be moving the entire fixture, and it lights up as you touch it. So well, let's see. Let's just go through and make some changes okay so scrolling down you see how it lights up and choose something um, pressing over change the steps go back to menu okay steps one hour okay go back to the presets so that's pretty much it here you see that spreadsheet i was talking about the marine biologist came up with and all the different times and what each channel should be programmed at. And as you see in the diagram, it's a nice bell curve. So I'll just kind of end with um, a shot of the unit. I know this was a lot of information. It's a long video, so hopefully you stuck through it, the whole thing. And I'm very happy with it. So um, this was the first review of the the different elements or the components I chose for the Ocean Motion Reef, and I'm very happy with it. Um, the programmability, uh, the coming with the controller, and um, just the price per LED, the 51 LEDs. Um, it's pretty low profile. Everything's great on it. So um, there's a lot of good LED fixtures out there, but I'm happy with this one. Uh, so thanks everyone for watching. The Ocean Motion Reef build, review of the IT2060 LED fixture. Take care.